I'm so pleased to welcome so many from our county leadership to share with you the exciting news about this outreach campaign that we've put together to notify <laughs> members of our community about all of the services that remain available while we are sheltering at home. I'd like to introduce who you're seeing on the Zoom screen to include our county executive, Mark Elrich, our state's attorney, John McCarthy, our sheriff, Darren Popkin, our chief of police, Marcus Jones, Dr. Raymond Crowell, the director of Health and Human Services, Lisa Merkin, the administrator for Child Welfare Services, oh. Naja Cabello, the manager for the trauma services at the Abused Persons Program and the Victim Assistance and Sexual Assault Program, Tom Mannion, the director of the Family Justice Center, Mario Worsussen, the administrator from the, for the Adult Protective Services, and Zola Shaw, a survivor speaker, Nicole Drew, the president of the Commission for Women. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. I'd like to turn it over to um, our county executive, uh, Mark Elrich, to make some remarks. Thank you. I'm sorry, and I didn't introduce Captain Amy Dom. My apologies. The captain, uh, the the captain for the Special Victims Investigation Division for the Montgomery County Police Department. My apologies. I'm sorry, <laughs> County Executive Elrich. Um, look, thank you for putting this together, Debbie, and thank you for your work and leadership uh, on this issue. It's it's really vitally important the work that you all are doing. Um, you know, the county's had a long-standing commitment and engagement in working to prevent and reduce um, domestic violence in the county. And this is not a pandemic special event, but this is an event to make sure everybody understands that we are continuing to maintain that commitment. The pandemic has not, um, you know, slowed our responses or led us to reduce any services. We are as committed to working with people in the community who need help as, as we always have been. Um, the truth is that for many of us being home has meant, you know, being able to spend more time with loved ones. Uh, and it's a good thing, except that you're not at work. Um, but for, for other people, being at home and being trapped with your abuser is a dangerous and difficult time. And the victims can be, um, can be seniors, they can be intimate partners, they can be children, they can be other vulnerable individuals, and they're unable to seek help on their own. And so we want everybody not to be afraid of being home and we want everyone to feel safe. And in this time, we know that the, the challenges are gonna increase and we wanna make sure that people know that we still have our support systems in place on the public health crisis around COVID-19, otherwise known as coronavirus, has magnified the dangers to these victims that they face every day because now they're in the same circumstances and within the same four walls um, all day long, as opposed to part of the day. Um, we have numerous resources to help, including the Family Justice Center, the Abused Persons Program, and of course, the Crisis Center. County resources are free, they're open, and they're available to assist in any language. And county service providers don't inquire about immigration status. So no one should have fear of contacting our county service providers. They're taking every precaution they can to maintain a self and safe and healthy social distancing um, while they provide support. And if you have a neighbor, a friend, or a family member that you're concerned about, encourage them to reach out for help, or you can make the call or send an email and receive guidance about how to support them. I'm going to show this sticker. I don't know if this sticker shows up for people, um, but this sticker is being circulated um, and will be available for people, um, I think on pizza boxes in one location and restaurants and other places where it provides information, phone numbers, and email, so that if you see the sticker and you want to pick it up, um, you can get this information and make sure that if you're a victim, discreetly be able to get the information and hopefully take use of it. Um, the Domestic Violence Coordinating Council brings together all of our government and community partners uh, to ensure that domestic violence victims are helped. And it takes this kind of coordinated community response to really be effective. So again, I want to close by thanking everybody on this call, which represents, I think, a pretty amazing team that continues to be committed to making sure that the county is ready and able and prepared to aid victims of domestic abuse. 
and thank you all again. Thank you so much, County Executive Elrich. I also neglected to introduce uh, Fire and Rescue uh, Services Chief Scott Goldstein. Thank you for joining us. Again, this is a collective and a collaborative of so many that you're seeing on the screen, as well as so many partners that have been working together to push this information, this vital information out to our county. I'd like to next introduce Zola Shaw. She's gonna share some words with you about her personal experience um, and how that and what that means in, in this time. Thank you, Zola, if you could share with us, please. Good afternoon, county executive and county leaders. Thank you for this opportunity and platform to tell my story to my community. My name is Zola Shaw and I'm a Montgomery County resident. Why I'm here today and able to share how I survived was in part due to our county's commitment to creating a victim-centered support system, valuable resources, county justices, and most importantly, devoted county employees who work to first build my trust and then provide the appropriate services needed. The county helped me throughout a time that, my, that countered my ex's efforts to design my world where I had no other choices but a life with him. During this public health crisis, where staying home and limiting our physical contact is the only way to keep us all safe, I recognize the additional barriers for victims of domestic and other family violence to find the mental space as well as the safe physical space to reach out for help. But I want you to know that the Family Justice Center, the Montgomery County Crisis Center, and other county agencies are still here and offering services to help victims of domestic and other forms of violence and abuse. When you reach out, county providers will provide you with trusted services to address your individual situation. The county's commitment to valuing my life, keeping me safe, and overall helping me build my power is what drives me to continue to serve my community. My relationship lasted close to eight years. When I first reported and responded to an intake assessment, I was told I had one of the most dangerous cases in the county. I lived with constant fear for years. As soon as old bruises healed, I received new ones. I was strangled until I passed out. I was dragged by my hair. I had things thrown at me. I was locked in a room, hit consistently, and even chased with a knife. He blamed me for my actions, so I blamed myself. I tried to reconcile out of love and hope that things would just change. I need others to understand this physical abuse did not just happen. In retrospect, there was an underlying effort from my abuser to remove everything that would surface my inner strength, including the mere contact with my family, my community, and most of all, our county support services. Abuse comes down to power and isolating me from resources and my network limited my power to move on with my life. I'm concerned in this current environment that many people are isolated and don't know where to turn or you have a friend or neighbor that you think may, may be living in an abusive household. My work colleague was actually the one who helped connect me to county services after noticing the signs. He shared that his mother was a domestic violence survivor and couldn't help but to question what I may be going through. I opened up to him and told him. After the next incident, I talked to him again and I ended up reporting it. If it hadn't been for his encouragement, I don't think I would have had the chance to receive the services I did. I'm grateful to my county assigned victims advocate who was the only person in my world at the time that understood the deep complexities of intimate partner violence and respected that I would have to make the decision on my own to escape. This was not something that someone could just tell me to do. For me, this was an excruciating decision making process, but it empowered me. My victims advocate guided me through developing my safe exit plan. There are so many other county employees and elected officials that supported me through my decision making process. Like many complex issues, addressing domestic violence takes the whole community. That community is still here, 
please reach out if you need help or if you are concerned about a friend, family member, or neighbor. Thank you for the opportunity to share my story. Thank you so much, Zola, for sharing those important and powerful words with us today and for helping our community understand um, that the county resources are still here and that not only can uh, each individual who may be in a situation reach out, but if you have a friend, family member, or neighbor, or anyone that you're concerned about, you too can access the resources and get assistance and figure out how to help support those that you care about um, that may be um, affected and suffering at home. I'd like to turn um, this over now to Sheriff Popkin for a few remarks. Uh, thank you, Debbie. Uh, County Executive Elrich, uh, Steam colleagues, and, and those who are on this call, I want to uh, just start off by uh, saying, Zola, it takes incredible courage to bring this forth to the community, but it is so incredibly valuable that you can state these words because your words mean so much to everybody on this call. As you know, the public is being encouraged to practice social distancing to prevent the spread of COVID-19. But as a result, family violence victims are being cut off from their support systems, trusted adults, counselors, medical professionals, and service providers. As part of social distancing, the public is being encouraged to switch to virtual or technology-based communication yet abusers nearly always have access to their victim's cell phone, computer, tablet, social media accounts, and other communication mechanisms. Social distancing is the best way to prevent further spread of this disease, but it must be combined with additional protections for victims of family violence who are simply not safe while they're home. That is why the Montgomery County Family Justice Center has remained and will continue to remain open and fully functioning during this public health crisis. Providing these free wraparound services is critical to the safety and well being of our community. The Sheriff's Office Domestic Violence Section continues to serve and enforce protective orders, peace orders, emergency evaluation petitions, and extreme risk protection orders, all of which are so crucial in our efforts to keep people safe and ensure that they cannot harm themselves or anyone else. Anyone who is feeling unsafe at home due to family violence, violence is encouraged to call the Family Justice Center at 240-773-0444. That's 240-773-0444 for assistance. We truly understand that many victims may not be able to safely make a phone call. So we have also created a new dedicated safe email account that's safe at montgomerycountymd.gov, safe at montgomerycountymd.gov. Anyone who needs assistance but cannot safely make a phone call can send an email to this address and professional staff from the Family Justice Center will reach out to provide assistance. I wanna thank you again for being on this call today and for social distancing. Please stay well as we are all in this together. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sheriff Popkin. I'm gonna ask my boss, State's Attorney John McCarthy, to share a few words. Uh, I, I wanna thank, uh, as everybody has before me, thank all of the partners we, we are doing this with here today, both public and private companies and businesses that are gonna join with us to get the message out. Uh, look, everyone knows that we as a nation are in crisis, but I think what we're really trying to talk to people who may be in personal crisis, uh, we're there for you. We are open for business. And if, if you are in crisis, reach out to us. My friend, the sheriff just gave wonderful advice about how you can safely and securely, securely reach out to us. I see Tom Mannion is in this call, who runs the Family Justice Center. Look, we're open for business to provide services. Uh, Zola, I found that your presentation today inspiring. I think you touched on a lot of issues that we routinely talk about in terms of, you, you described the cycle of domestic violence that you live, that we see so often in our cases. Uh, you talked about how uh, you were forced into isolation and separated from your family and friends. Uh, one of the power trips that people so often uh, use in these kinds of situations. Great advice to people, but what we are trying to tell people and, and get the message out is you are not isolated, you are not alone. 
We're open for business. If you're a domestic violence victim, we will help you. You can access us. If it's a child abuse case, Protective Services is there to investigate those cases. We have an enormous senior community out there. If there are cases of elder abuse, uh, victimization of seniors in our community, we are there to protect you as well. Uh, my friend, the county executive mentioned a minute ago something I think is vitally important. And, and, and then that is fact, we do not care about immigration status when, when it comes to protecting the people in this community. I will tell you, if you come to the state's attorney's office as a victim of a crime, we will never inquire about your immigration status. I forbid that question. We are here to help you and give you whatever support we can possibly do to help you through the crisis that you're living through. Uh, we have lots of business people, you know, they're going to be stuffing pizza boxes, putting signs up in liquor stores, getting the word out in every conceivable fashion about what we're trying to do here. I, again, I want to thank everybody who's participating in this call. Uh, I, you know, uh, we, we just want to make sure that everybody who is isolated because of the way we're now living knows we are still here to help. It's a very simple message. Be safe. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, John. I'm going to ask now uh, uh, Chief Jones uh, to share some remarks. So uh, good afternoon and thank you, Debbie. And thank you to all the partners for, uh, for sharing this a very important message. Um, and thank you all for helping us spread the word today. It's important in this challenging time to come together as a community and help each other. And Zola, I also want to thank you for sharing your story of survival. I think it was very powerful and it's very important for other people. And, it's, it's a, and you were very brave in sharing in that story. And thank you for that. Our community is weathering an unprecedented pa pandemic. And with that may come added stress and anxiety. This is in turn contributes to potential victimization of some of our most vulnerable populations, including our elderly and our children. In our Special Victims Investigations Division, our domestic violence unit, a group of detectives assigned to investigate the most serious cases of domestic violence, has seen a 25% increase in case assignments. And many of these cases have involved knives and guns. While these cases are rising, case assignments are falling in the child abuse and elder abuse units because many of those who may have been victimized or may be victimized during this time aren't being seen by the usual reporters, such as teachers and healthcare workers. I want to remind our community that Montgomery County Police serves all members of our community regardless of their immigration status, as it was noted before, and so do our partner agencies. An individual will not be arrested by a Montgomery County police officer based solely on their immigration status. Guns in our homes are always a concern to us, and we never want them used in domestic violence cases. We encourage gun safety if there is one in your home. I also want to share that we offer free gun locks to Montgomery County residents at each of our district stations. And if you aren't sure in which, uh, in which district you reside, you can always check on our Montgomery County Police website or contact our non-emergency number. Don't suffer in silence. If you need help or if you have a friend, neighbor, or loved one who you believe is suffering family violence in these trying times, please reach out. Our officers are ready to help and so are our partners. We can overcome this together. And again, thank you and please stay healthy. Thank you so much, Chief Jones. Um, I'm gonna ask Dr. Crowell, the Director of Health and Human Services to share a few words and to, to talk a little bit more about some of our other concerns uh, in addition to domestic violence. Thank you so much, Dr. Crowell. Thank you all. Thank you all for doing this. This, this is important. It comes at a, at a moment when everybody in Montgomery County is, is stressed, uh, unusually and unduly stressed in ways that most of us have not seen in our entire lifetimes. Uh, job loss, a stay-at-home order, our children are out of school, families are together and put together in ways for periods of time that is, that is uncommon. 
it stresses the healthiest of relationships and, and, and both in terms of children and our, our, our older family members and, and for the adults that are, that, are, that are living in relationships together. And the support systems are upended. You've heard all of that. I think uh, we need uh, residents to know that we're open for business and you've heard that already. I, I think uh, we're seeing um, uh, abuse and, and problems uh, across our system. More than half of our adult protective service calls are, are currently for the self-neglect and 26% for financial ex exploitation. We need, we need our neighbors to keep an eye on your older neighbors, perhaps help them to get needed food and medicine, but also to, to, to keep an eye out for, for any kind of signs of abuse that you might see um, and, and help them in this, in this moment. Uh, our, our, our referrals to abused persons and victims assistance and, and sexual assault programs, APP and, and BASAP, are already more in the first half of April than they were in the entire month of March. So we are seeing those numbers rise, and we know that there are, there are folks out there who are cut off and isolated and, and who need some help. Uh, we, we, we have measures in place, including telephone appointments, that, that will help us to respond in, in these different, in these different ways, in these different times, in, in these difficult times. So I want you, need everyone here to be a good friend, a good neighbor, a, a good family member, and to encourage folks to reach out for help or to reach out on their behalf. And, and don't be afraid of, of helping someone of asking someone do they need help and helping them to find their way to our doors. You've heard the, the Family Justice Center number, um, 7730444, but I will also tell you that if you don't know where else to go and you're looking for a place to start, call the Crisis Center at 277-240-7774000. They can help you get to, to where you need to go. We can help you, help you help people to get safe. If you just have a question, just call and ask. There's a lot of potential for physical and emotional abuse in this time. Um, we, there is nothing that, that should allow us to, to, to don't let the stress of, of, of isolation and fear of, of COVID-19 stop you from getting help or, or getting, getting to safety. There is no reason that anyone should ever tolerate physical or emotional abuse of themselves or their elders or, or their children. Um, the lines are open. We are here to help. There's a team of people that are on this call and in the county that are here to help, but it is not just the team of, of, of county staff and county representatives. Uh, it is also the advocate community and each of you in the community who are watching out for each other that are gonna make the difference and keep people safe. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Crowell. And um, you know, I wanna thank everyone for your time today. Before we open it up to questions, I wanna add a couple of things so that the community knows where to go and what's out there in addition to the information that's been shared. On the Family Justice Center website, there are links to multiple phone numbers, contact places, um, and other resources um, in English and in Spanish so that you can get that information that you may vitally need. In addition, on the state's attorney website, there is information including a fact sheet on scams in the time of COVID-19. And I think that Dr. Crowell really raised that important point as well, that many of our more vulnerable community members are vulnerable to financial exploitation and other scams that are rampant right now in the time of COVID-19. So I would mention that as well. Um, I wanna thank everyone uh, so much for your participation, uh, particularly Zola Shaw for her bravery for sharing her story this morning and for really, um, really illuminating what we're talking about. Um, it's real and we're here. Uh, we would open it up to questions. So for those of us joining us from the media, if you could let us know in the chat box that you have a question and then Debbie will recognize you for your question and we'll unmute your microphone. Uh, Ms. Grimshaw. Hi, so my question is, is there any immediate relief for those who could be struggling right now? Is there like a, a number to call maybe uh, to put them in hotels or anything like that? 
So I'm going to give a brief answer, and I know that some of our partners on the phone will give additional information, but contacting the Crisis Center um, or the Family Justice Center, either of the numbers that are a part of this campaign, the answer is yes. Um, the answer is yes. There is immediate relief. But I'm going to ask um, Tom Mannion, Director of the Family Justice Center, and then Naja Cabello, the Director of Trauma Services for the county, to share additional information. Sure, absolutely. Anyone who is Experiencing um, an emergency situation or who's experiencing violence in their home at this time, um, they're encouraged to call the Family Justice Center. Um, that number's been shared, but I'll say it again, 240-773-0444. Um, another number is uh, the, the County Crisis Center, 240-777-4000. Um, the Family Justice Center is open during business hours, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.00. The crisis center is uh, obviously a 24 hour, uh, 24 hour phone number. Um, so anyone who's in, who's in need of immediate relief, um, including um, shelter placement or emergency housing, um, we can help with all of those, with all of those needs. Naja Cabello, if you'd like to add, and then if there's any additional information from uh, Lisa Merkin or Mario Worsussen regarding child welfare or adult protective services. Yes, I want to reiterate um, that phone number. I think it's very important for domestic violence victims to know that if your home is unsafe, um, there are um, places that you can go and the crisis center can, uh, the therapist there can brainstorm with you all your different options, including the domestic violence shelter in Montgomery County, which is available. So please do not hesitate to call 24 seven. The crisis center is open with therapists 240-777-4000 or 240 hope Those are the numbers uh, to call. I also want to emphasize for rape and sexual assault victims and other victims like of domestic violence, physical assaults, that we have seen a downward trend of um, victims not going to the hospital for fear of getting into the emergency room. And the Shady Grove Hospital, the safe unit, has created a separate entrance. So please do not hesitate. If you are injured, you can still go to the hospital to get medical attention and you do not have to go through the emergency room entrance the safe uh, the uh, sexual assault forensic unit will take you in into their unit without having to go through the emergency room. I think it's very important for people to still get their physical exams at this point in time. We also have seen an uptick of referrals of uh, um, parents calling in with um, violence at home from their adult children either adult children who have substance use disorders, mental health disorders, but just violent at home. So we want to help those parents as well. Please call the crisis center. We are still assigning clients every day to therapists. We can follow up with you on the phone and uh, we are here to help. If your home is unsafe, even though there is a stay at home order, if your home is unsafe, there are options for you. Thank you so much, Naja. And I'd like to just mention as well, um, the county has created an email address, safe at montgomerycountymd.gov, that will be monitored during business hours and then obviously checked again first thing the next morning, recognizing that you may not be able to make a phone call um, and you can get assistance through, uh, through that number, through that email address. And also on the Family Justice website, uh, Center website, there's additional information about other national text lines and other things that can connect you with services if it's an urgent need and you're unable to use the phone. Wanted to mention those things as well. Was there anything additional from the child welfare or adult protective services perspective that should be noted? Uh, I'm, I'm glad to uh, say from adult protective services that uh, we certainly are open. Uh, we service uh, adults 18 through their senior years and uh, we would certainly um, uh, welcome a call if there was an abusive or neglectful situation and we have professional social workers that would uh, create a safety plan working with that victim or client 
um, exploring different options uh, in the community, alternate housing perhaps, or, uh, or, or maybe supports in that home uh, uh, to assist that individual. And we certainly do applaud um, Zola for her sharing and her courage. And um, we do uh, encourage all of us to look out for our neighbors and friends and to know that you can call Adult Protective Services at 240-777-3000 or if an email is easier, um, it, ads uh, at montgomerycountymd.gov would also suffice. Thank you, and again, all of these numbers and email addresses are available on the Family Justice Center website. Um, Lisa Merkin, is there anything you wanna to add from the child welfare perspective? And then I see that we have a few more questions. We'll be, we'll be going to those in momentarily. Yes, thank you. Um, what I will also say is similar to what Mario just mentioned is the Child Welfare Services is open 24 hours, seven days a week. The same phone numbers that have just been stated, the 240-777-4417 number is our hotline number. You can also contact the Crisis Center. We have social workers taking calls and actually going in the community as well. So please don't hesitate to call. Thank you. Uh, Dan from Bethesda Beat has a question. Hi, um, this uh, question is for Chief Jones. Uh, Chief, you had mentioned a 25% uh, increase in the caseload. What period, time period does that cover specifically? And are all of those domestic violence calls, because I know you had mentioned uh, child abuse calls, elder abuse calls had gone down. So, so generally this has been sort of, we've looked at these numbers since the beginning of the crisis. Um, so as we, if we go back as far as, I believe, March 5th, um, we've kind of looked at the numbers of just being paying attention to the domestic uh, violence uh, cases that we've had. Um, the domestic violence cases don't, do not include um, the child abuse and the elder abuse. Those are separate units that actually do those investigations. Um, and so what, what we have seen the decrease in those particular uh, in those particular cases, and and I think you know, and I, I would note in addition to that, I think one of the concerns is that while we know statistically that these abuse events are occurring, um, and there's all sorts of national news and expert and research out there on these topics, the concern is if people are isolated at home, they don't know how or where or unable to, to access resources, which is why it's so important for all of us as community members to help our neighbors and our friends and our family members, even if they're in a situation where they may not be able to reach out themselves, you can get guidance on how to be helpful to them. We have a question from Chris Jordan in News 4. Yes, thank you very much, Zola. Um, you have to know that um, for those of us in the media who try to get stories out, to have somebody uh, speak from the heart as you did, um, that makes us able to uh, get the attention of a, of a wider audience. So I know it's difficult and I thank you uh, for that. Uh, I wanna make sure we have heard a number of phone numbers now and I have the ability in about 15 seconds to put a phone number and an email address, so I wanna make sure I have the right one. I think I originally heard 240-7730444, and I believe that's the Family Violence Center. Is that Family correct? Justice Center, that's correct. Uh, Family Violence Center. And then- Family Justice Center. I'm sorry, Family Justice Center? Yes. Is that the number that is uh, going to be on the, um, material, the flyers that are handed out uh, with the pizza boxes and in the grocery bags? So um, yes, that phone number and the crisis center phone number, both numbers are on there. Um, you know, then the community can access either one, the Family Justice Center while it operates uh, and open uh, during business hours, it rolls over to the crisis center um, after hours. So okay. either, either number works. Um, you said that, I have the ability to put out one number and one email. I wanna make sure that I put out the right one that's the most effective and the most accessible. Is that Family Justice Center 240-773-0444? Yes, and the safe at montgomerycountymd.gov, please. And the safe at montgomerycountymd. Uh, spelled out .gov. Uh, yes. Thank you. That That's important because I want to get out something that is available, accessible, um, either 24-7 or as you said, uh, the email would be business hour and, the, and then checked. 
Uh, thank correct. you all. Thank, thank you, you so much, um, Chris. And, and you know, uh, Chris raises sort of another point, and then we have one last question to field. Chris raises another really important point, which is um, as community members, you can also help get the word out about this campaign. Um, if you go to the Family Justice Center website, these materials are available to post. We have cards, we have stickers with these phone numbers on them. We wanna thank our local business partners um, who are gonna be distributing this information. For example, our county liquor stores are gonna be having this information on every receipt that goes out, stickers on their cash register plexiglass. Um, founding farmers in Potomac will be distributing in their boxes that go out um, to families that are picking up food. Giuseppe's Pizza in Rockville, the same. Uh, Mana Food Center, one of our partners, is going to be distributing information through their networks. Montgomery County Public Schools is going to be distributing information through their networks. I would encourage you all to share this information as well. Um, and we're happy to send you, a, you know, additional information, fact sheets that you can share. But you will be able to find that information on the Family Justice Center website. Um, so thank you for, for raising that issue as well. There's a question from a community member about what to look out for for our friends and neighbors during this time. It may be harder to observe violence in isolation. What are some things to be aware of and what should we be keeping in mind? Again, I'm going to offer a few comments and then turn it to my, to my uh, colleagues, uh, Tom Mannion and Naja Cabello and others who may want to contribute an answer. I, I think, you know, a lot of times typically when we're dealing with victims of violence, we're concern when we see changes in pattern, you know, someone that typically comes to a, a group that they participate in that suddenly stops coming, a new person in their life that is controlling their actions, obviously physical signs that we may be concerned about. I think part of it that we should be looking for now is a lack of communication or stilted communication or veiled communication um, that people aren't able to communicate exactly what's going on. But perhaps if you'd been communicating regularly in, by Zoom or by Facebook Messenger or Live or whatever all these different options are, and suddenly someone doesn't want to show their face anymore to you. I think that's a big red flag that we should be looking for, but also hearing the words and hearing what's behind the words and reaching out to others. Um, Tom and Naja, if you could add additional things. Sure. Um, I would absolutely echo what Debbie said about, um, about if someone has a behavioral change or if there's a change in their pattern, that could be a red flag. Um, I also want to caution, um, caution folks. Obviously, if you just notice a change in someone's behavior, that, that may not automatically mean that they're being hurt at home, but it could be one piece of evidence um, that leading to a, a larger picture. Um, I think um, being drawn or even more withdrawn than, than normal during these times of social isolation can be a red flag. Um, additionally, there are signs that we might look for if we were face to face that we can't look for or observe right now. So one of the things that we would previously tell people is that if someone has unexplained injuries or if they have injuries that they're clearly trying to cover up. So the way that we would you know, convert that to current times where we're gonna be socially isolating is if you're able to get someone on a, a video chat, um, you may be able to observe injuries or um, see that they may be trying to cover something up um, or if they don't wish to in these types of activities when they used to uh, much more frequently. Um, I think the last thing I would say is that um, a lot of times someone who's being hurt is going to be, they're afraid of their partner and there are ways that you can kind of read between the lines and understand their behavior and see that they're making decisions about their life, about who they're talking to, about where they're going, about what they're doing, based on fear of how their partner might react. Um, and I think that's a very important uh, component to all of this, a very important sign to watch out for. I, I would certainly echo everything that everyone has said, and I'll add a couple of examples of some referrals that we received that had to do with community members uh, stepping in to help someone else. Uh, one referral was uh, someone who actually um, looked at someone at a shopping center, at a, uh, it was a grocery store, and the person um, had visible marks on her face and this uh, good partner, this good person, Good Samaritan, reached out to this woman and found the phone number 
and gave the phone number for the abuse persons program and um, was able to connect this woman who was suffering in silence at home uh, to our services. Another example that we have seen is people who are living in apartment buildings, for example. Sometimes you can hear the noise of someone fighting um, in the next, um, next door to you, and you can certainly call the police. And we have seen some of the protection orders <clears throat> that have come in have to do with neighbors reaching out to the police and informing the police that there was a fight going on uh, next door to them. And this is very concrete ways where the community and uh, neighbors can help each other during this time of isolation. Certainly I would encourage family members to keep in touch with um, your um, elderly parents, with also, um, uh, family members that you know have been in domestic violence situations before, it's very important to keep in touch with them so that you know regularly what's going on with them and then they will feel more uh, trusting and open uh, to tell you something happens. Um, thank you so much, Naja. I, I want to add for anyone that's listening or has an opportunity to view this, if you are a business, a nonprofit, really anyone in the community that has the ability to disseminate this information, we have cards um, that are front and back with the phone numbers and critical information about what to look for, different signs of abuse, one of the questions that was posed earlier, um, as well as posters, um, other things that can be displayed in businesses that can be handed out, can be put in takeout boxes, et cetera. And I just, uh, for the media, I just put the email um, address for Smitha Varia, who is the uh, program manager for the Domestic Violence Coordinating Council. She is going to be responsible for the dissemination of materials and we can make those available. We already have thousands of cards printed um, and ready to be distributed and in fact are already being distributed through the businesses that I previously mentioned in this call. So we would um, really appreciate anyone and everyone's support in pushing this information out. Uh, I don't see any additional questions being posed uh, on the on the chat. Um, so. At this point, I wanna thank everyone and really just thank our county leadership for your commitment, your dedication to all of the members of our community um, in this important effort, really um, reaching out to those who are at home who may be uh, dealing with domestic violence, elder abuse, child abuse, uh, sexual assault, uh, vulnerabilities uh, related to that exploitation. Um, we are here, we are here to help. Resources are free, they're immigration blind, uh, we want to be helpful, uh, reach out. You can also call in anonymously just to get advice. Uh, please do, um, we're here. And thank you again for your participation today. Um, we really appreciate all of the support um, from the members of our community. Have a, have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.